<coughs> Today we will be reviewing an anomalous location. Item number SCP-100. Object class Euclid. Special containment procedures. SCP-100 is to have six guards patrolling the interior of the perimeter's fencing, and two guards dedicated to the monitoring of the interior and exterior of both warehouses and the residential building. With reactions to occur every three hours, any unauthorized personnel found within SCP-100 are to be detained for questioning prior to amnestetic administration and release. Three guards remain within the storefront of SCP-100, with rotations to occur every eight hours. The storefront entrance is to remain locked at all times, with keys provided to necessary personnel. Private property and no trespassing signs are to be posted on the front of the storefront to deter any customers from stopping at SCP-100. <clears throat> it should be noted that any constructs SCP-100-1 created are to be removed from SCP-100 and melted down into slag, with the exception of SCP-100-2-A and SCP-100-2-B. Should SCP-100-1 become uncooperative, SCP-100-2-A and SCP-100-2-B may be removed from SCP-100 until that time at SCP-100-1 becomes cooperative again. The largest of the two warehouses within SCP-100 has been converted into a basic research facility. All objects created by SCP-100-1, excluding SCP-100-2-A and SCP-102-B, may be used for research purposes. Testing on SCP-100-1 itself may only be conducted with written permission from the acting head researcher. Description SCP-100 is an abandoned scrapyard 80 kilometers from South Carolina known as Jamaican Joe's Junkyard Jewelry. The scrapyard covers roughly 5,000 square meters of fenced off land consisting of two warehouses, a storefront, and a small residential building, as well as neglected land and land used for storage. SCP-100 holds roughly 1,500 vehicles, both pressed and unpressed, as well as rough, roughly 1,400 kilograms of s separated scrap, estimated to be worth $5,000. SCP-100's anomalous effects manifest through SCP-100-1 and its constructs, including SCP-102-A and SCP-100-2-B. Autonomy is lost when SCP-1 or one of its objects cross the fence perimeter of SCP-100, remaining in the state until reintroduction. <clears throat> SCP-100-1 is an autonomous, sapient, humanoid construct consisting mostly of copper piping, uninsulated copper wiring, and aluminum cans. SCP-100-1 lacks the ability for written or verbal communication. However, it possesses the ability to communicate using rudimentary sign language. SCP-100-1 is largely uninterested in conversation outside of sales, and information gathered from it has been limited. SCP-100-1 appears to possess skills and craftsmanship, demonstrating the ability to operate tools such as arc welders, drills, and power saws as well as heavy machinery such as car compressors and forklifts. SCP-100-1 possesses the ability to create autonomous constructs similar to itself using materials available within SCP-100. SCP-100-1 tends to create four specific animals, iguanas, crocodiles, turtles, and flamingos. However, SCP-100-1 has been known to craft other species such as domestic pets. To maintain compliance, SCP-100-1 has been allowed to keep two objects labeled SCP-100-2-A and SCP-100-2-B.
SCP-100-2-A and SCP-100-2-B are constructs superficially reassembling insects, assuming to be created by SCP-100, as they have occupied SCP-100 since the initial discovery of SCP-100. The names Ramon and Beatrice are welded into the backs of SCP-100-2-A and SCP-100-2-B, respectively. They appear to be operate as both. They appear to operate as both companions as well as guards for SCP-100, as they patrol the perimeter of SCP-100, except during intervals of interaction with SCP-100-1. <clears throat> SCP-100-1 appears to follow a ritualistic schedule, repeating the same actions daily. At, the schedule goes as followed. From 0800 to 1500, SCP-100-1 enters the storefront of SCP-100, seating itself behind a counter and attempting to bargain with any humans within the storefront. Occasionally, SCP-100-1 will return to the yard prematurely for reasons unknown. From 1500 to 1600, SCP-100-1 interacts with SCP-100-2-A and SCP-100-2-B, communicating using vague hand and arm gestures. Interaction tends to consist of grooming, repair, and activities resembling fetch and hide and seek. From 1600 to 2000, SCP-100-1 performs various tasks, including taking stock of material within SCP-100, cleaning and maintaining tools and heavy machinery, and cleaning the interiors and exteriors of buildings present within SCP-100. From 2000 to 0000, SCP-100-1 performs what is assumed to be leisurely acts, ranging from creating new construct Interacting with SCP-100-2-A, SCP-100-2-B, and patrolling SCP-100. From 0000 to 0800, SCP-100-1 enters the residential building where it remains seated at a desk for the duration of this time. SCP-100 In the event that a human enters the storefront of SCP-100 during the interval of time SCP-100-1 is seated behind the counter, SCP-100-1 will attempt to bargain with them, using a variety of gestures to convey meaning. Most attempts by SCP-100-1 are to sell scrap, figures of its own creation, or repair services. However, it has been known has been known to purchase scrapped. Despite SCP-100-1's inability to read, it possesses the ability to perform basic mathematics as demonstrated by sales. Sales made by SCP-100-1 are typically met with some degree of unfairness. SCP-100-1 has been known to intentionally use faulty scales and contaminate scrap piles with cheaper metals, and has demonstrated knowledge of the area of effect within SCP-100, as SCP-100-1 has sold constructs repeatedly, despite the loss of autonomy when exiting SCP-100. Efforts to confront SCP-100-1 about this have been met with both distress and indifference, with referral to a sign posting on the wall, reading, No refunds, Mon, happening regardless of SCP-100-1 emotional response. SCP-100 was discovered on 11-09-1976, following reports of strange machines operating from within the scrapyard. These rumors were discredited as urban legends, and a Foundation agent was sent to SCP-100 to act as the landowner until containment was performed under the guise of property sale. A wooden privacy fence was built along the former perimeter of SCP-100. One-way windows were installed in the storefront, and a highway now running through the nearby town of redirects the majority of civilian traffic. Addendum 
100-A. Records show the property is owned by one Joseph DeVell, with the mailing address sharing the same name. Local utility companies report billing had stopped approximately three months before the discovery of SCP-100, which was a found abandoned safe for SCP-100-1, SCP-100-2-A, SCP-100-2-B, and several avian and canine figures presumed to be made by SCP-100-1. The initial sweep of the buildings revealed the residential building to be mostly bare, with the only sign of former occupants being a note found taped to the door of the storefront. See or refer to document 100-A. Incident 100-A On On June 3rd, 2005, SCP-100-1 created a humanoid, autonomous construct 10 centimeters in height, the first time SCP-100-1 has done so. Significant effort was put into this construct compared to others. With greater detail applied to the construct, including facial features and JJ welded into the back of the construct, and stainless steel making up the majority of the construct. SCP-100-1 placed the construct on the counter of the storefront for the duration of the scheduled interview. Both using vague gestures to seem to communicate with one another. Following the confiscation of this construct, SCP-100-1 remained seated with the residential building of SCP-100-1 for a total of 10 days. Document 100-A The following is a copy of the note recovered upon discovery of SCP-100. The note goes as followed. The note reads as followed. Out to lunch. Please see assistant. JJ End log